So, what are we doing today? The Simpsons! Oh yeah, that's right. Why are we doing The Simpsons? Because you hate the world and want it to suffer right now. Yeah, that sounds a bit right. You guys want to watch some shit? I'll show you some shit. Today we're going to be doing the infamous episode, Bart vs. Itchy and Scratchy. Despite only coming out like two years ago, it's grown a rampant amount of hatred. In fact, last time I checked, the only episode that has a lower rating at this time is Lisa Goes Gaga, which I reviewed back when I didn't know what the hell I was doing. And why is this episode so panned? Well, Bart, how does it feel to be trolled, memed, jiffed, and dare I say, Social commentary! Have you ever been in a situation where you thought that your art was too high quality, people didn't find you pretentious enough, and you wanted to show off how little you knew about the world around you? Try social commentary! Please consult your local political science major begging for change on the street corner by the library before you attempt this. Side effects may include butchering your own career, giving off terrible implications, being the exact same things you fight against, and people ranting about you on the internet. Results may vary. Do not attempt in the state of California. It's not that all social commentary is bad, or even that The Simpsons can't be good at it. There are tons of good social commentary episodes in The Simpsons. In fact, its very inception was more or less a commentary on the typical sitcom formula that permeated in the 80s. Shows like Full House, Fresh Prince, or Family Matters showed a world that was more or less happy-go-lucky, where everyone had problems that could be wrapped up in 22 minutes that, in a world that actually doesn't exist. Despite being animated, The Simpsons was always meant to be the more more down-to-earth comparison, showing a stark mirror on the typical American life, the actual American life. Of course, as time went on, it became more and more of a caricature of itself, and went into an entirely different direction, losing sight of the point of what it was trying to do. And now it has just as much a clue of reality as Full House did back in the 80s. In an attempt to figure out how the longest-running cartoon of all time has been holding up, I've actually been marathoning the entirety of season 30. Why am I doing that? Lisa Marie Simpson? Are you reading the Bible? Yes, it's good, but I have a few notes. Because I really, really wanted to hear Marge misuse the word noob four times in a single episode. What a noob. How could I be such a noob? I am such a noob. I am such a noob. Uh huh, what a noob. Total noob. Classic noob. I don't know about everyone else, but when I'm sitting alone in the middle of the night just wondering if I'll ever make it to tomorrow, I know that hearing Marge say the word noob again and again without knowing what the fuck it means is just what I need to get me to tomorrow. This is the show that wanted to take on the whole female reboot controversy. The latest victim of this gal Kata. Which one? Pick one. I mean, it's not exactly a new concept. Throughout the 2010s, many shows have had reboots or remakes with women or minorities as the starring roles. Most infamously was the 2016 version of Ghostbusters, but it's come up with many other pieces of media since. Even something like the new Star Wars film found its way into this controversy. So, I suppose before we can continue, I do need to give my opinion on this whole trend. I hate it. I really fucking hate it. And I don't think it's a big surprise if you know me. And no, it's not because I hate female protagonists or female characters. I have the receipts on this one. Almost every single one of my writing projects is female-led. There's two main reasons that I hate these, but they're both connected. It's really uncreative. Like, before this whole female reboot or remake thing came up, it was pretty much universally agreed that reboots and remakes were getting overdone, and Hollywood had a dearth of creativity, relying on them too much. The female reboot thing was basically an attempt to straw man and stereotype that argument. Now, if you were tired of reboots in general, Apparently you're a sexist! Oh, and that's the other reason. The entire concept of this is sexist as hell. I'm sorry, I'm not like the creators of Ghostbusters 2016. I don't find being a female a novelty. That's just the feeling that I get out of virtually every single one of these films or shows. And that leads to another problem. These shows and movies tend to rely so much on being female-led that they don't try anywhere else. Like, at all. Which ends up being sexist in another way. Where, in almost every single case, the female version is worse than the male version, you're giving out some very bad implications. I literally can't think of a single example where this is not the case. I mean, saying you like Ghostbusters 2016, that, that's one thing. Saying it's better than the original is a harder argument to make. And of course, the whole thing just reeks of laziness. This has been asked a million times, but never answered. Why don't you make your own damn characters or franchises? I'm not asking for the most original thing ever, I'm fine with, say, Laura Croft, who is very much inspired by Indiana Jones. 
In a sense, rebooting something with a female protagonist tells me that you don't know how to write one. You don't know what makes the female experience unique, which is kind of a necessity for writing a female character, isn't it? It's safe to say that The Simpsons does not agree with my perspective, but this episode has other problems that we are going to need to get into. Or there'd be no point to doing anything but leave this as just a video essay. So let's get into the madness. We'll start with one of the more pressing problems. People say that The Simpsons is out of ideas. After all, they've gone on for 600 episodes. In hell they make you watch them all in a row. It's impossible for a series to have that many stories, especially when the main characters don't really grow and change. I actually kind of don't agree with that. I think The Simpsons could easily still be fresh and unique 600 episodes in. The reason that it isn't is because every fucking episode of the show picks a plot and abandons it 7 minutes in, to go with a new one that's completely unrelated. This might seem standard Simpsons formula because they've done it so long, but it's actually a pretty big problem and no it wasn't there from the beginning. The first plot they choose tends to not relate to anything within the rest of the episode, and it always makes each story feel very unfocused, and it shows that the writers don't really communicate much. The worst Simpsons episodes tend to feel like a game of round robin where nothing connects. The big controversial thing only takes up about the first act, and it comes right out of nowhere. Krusty just decides to announce an all-female reboot of Itchy and Scratchy. We here at the Krusty Show really care about gender diversity. Ask anyone. Our lawyers, our attorneys, anyone! And of course, everyone with a complaint has a stupid reason for it. On the other hand, Krusty isn't much better. That movie where Superman was a chick made a Magilla of shackles! I think this might be a reference to Wonder Woman playing off of Krusty's stupidity, but there's a Supergirl movie, and that came out in the 1980s, and it was terrible, and it was panned, and it didn't turn a profit. It. So this joke is awful. Like, if this episode was trying to say that the entire argument is stupid, that'd be one thing. But they clearly do take a side, and I don't get what they're trying to do here. I never really thought about Itchy and Scratchy as male or female, but it is cool that they're girls now. Maybe the episode is trying to showcase both sides and it's just bad at it? I always thought they were a married couple and that's why they fought so much. I don't know what to be liberal about anymore. But anyway, Bart invites everyone over to not watch the TV show, which honestly Honestly, isn't the worst idea that I've ever heard. I'm proud that you're starting to hate things, but take it slow. You use up all your hate when you're young. One day you'll be an old man who likes things that suck. You know, I love how this joke doesn't work on any level. Isn't Abe Simpson's main character trait how he hates even innocuous shit? Oh, don't worry about that though. They fuck up the characters so much more as the episode goes on. This is Lisa Simpson, recording my reaction to this historic moment in cartoon women's history. See, here's the problem with this whole female reboot thing. Before they come out, they tend to get held to the highest regard, and the most important thing ever, like a catalyst for real change. Like, they get held up as, like, this bastion of women's rights. Not just what a female-driven movie or a cartoon can do. And when the movie ends up being horrible, everything you said about it doesn't go away. What you, who support this kind of shit have been saying, has basically wrapped up your entire message in a steaming pile of shit. Now, if the show wasn't suffering from dementia, it might actually commentate on that, but that's not what they choose to do. Of course, Bart comes in and he finds it funny. And Lisa catches this on camera because, uh, when you want to film your own reaction to a show, what you do is aim the camera away from yourself and at the fucking door. Lisa is supposed to be the smart one, right? I mean, it's not really a nitpick. This is a major plot point in the episode. We did it! We prejudged something without giving it a chance! Oh no, these people saw that a product might not be appealing to them, use their own judgment to not consume it. Boil them alive! Like Bart Simpson would ever watch a girl Itchy and Scratchy. You know, that might be another problem with this whole thing. Itchy and Scratchy is just about the worst property you could ever use to push forward a feminist message. Like, let's really think about this. Itchy and Scratchy is a violent show to an over-the-top extent. It's been a plot point in several episodes in the past. The issue with that is that doing this would definitely most likely offend the audience that it's trying to appeal to. Violence against women in media has been argued against for the entire entirety of the decade, and now you got a show with only women getting maimed. You sick fucks. I believe actual feminists would probably argue that this is normalizing violence towards women. So Lisa decided to upload Bart laughing at the show to the internet, because when the characters have lost all likability, you may as well continually tempt the audience to try and drown them. The footage goes right on to Tosh.0. Oh. Sorry, I mean Josh.0. Oh. You know when you go back and forth between actual celebrities and expies of them? It, it feels kind of stupid. Well, Bart, how does it feel to be trolled, memed, jiffed, and dare I say, 
Capone? I'll be right back. Gonna blow my brains out. Like, you, you guys you guys just don't even know. You don't even know the half of Simpsons Season 30. This shit is in every episode. Every single one. Why are you riding a motorcycle? It's not for fun. I got arrested. That's worse. This is the season that had the eSports episode after all. But God, every new time I hear this stuff, it just gets worse. Oh, and for the record, Lisa, uploading a video of someone without their consent isn't trolling. In many jurisdictions, it's a felony. Even in the jurisdictions that it isn't, it can be called a dick move. So you're gonna try and ruin Bart's life because he liked a show that you wanted him to like, and then he lied about it. Somehow this episode wants us to put Lisa's stance on the moral high ground, by the way. And stupid, 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 then Bart gets attacked. Itchy and Scratchy has, like, next to nothing to do with the rest of the episode, by the way. Bart escapes into the girls' bathroom, because of course he does, where this happens. You tell anyone about this, you're cancelled. Charlie Rose cancelled. Who the fuck wrote this? Anyway, Bart makes quick friends with them because they share his troublemaking ways. The only difference is that they do their terrorism for a good cause. It's the old home ec classroom, where they would brainwash girls into being good little housewives. This half of the episode is going to be fun. You have my guarantee, because it's even worse than the first half. Anyway, these girls call their group Bossy Riot, which is a reference to an actual group that I can't say the name of or else I'll get demonetized. They demonstrate their punk power by blending a history book. Shame too, or else they might have learned that this kind of behavior usually ends up in jail time, and the sinking of the reputation of a movement in the public eye. Like, you know, like it did in real life. Right now we're just training bras, mm -hmm. but soon we'll be the strongest, most supportive bras anyone has ever seen. You know, it's really easy to determine if something is a first draft, believe it or not. In this episode, BRA stands for Battle Ready Armor. I mean, Boys' Rights Association. So what Milhouse is saying is that we're all training Boys' Rights Associations. Soon we shall all be strong and sturdy Boys' Rights Associations. The joke isn't that Milhouse is a dumbass. The joke is what writers think passes for a joke. Meanwhile, vandalism spree. Bossy Riot is so cool, we need fearless female activists to fight back against misogyny and manspreading. Activists. There's a fine line between civil disobedience and just vandalizing for the hell of it. Like, this episode portrays these people as the good guys, which does not do good things for their message. I mean, let's take a look at this whole thing all together. People shouldn't be so pissy about female reboots, is one message. But innocent people should be okay with being targeted by vandalism just because it's done with a feminist bent, is another message entirely. And honestly, it's kind of psychotic. For not going along with what Lisa wanted to, Lisa attempted to internet shame Bart. For Bart pushing Lisa's ideals along, Lisa attacks Bart. You can't be an activist for women's rights. You don't know anything about the feminist cause. A lot of people who fight for women's rights don't know anything about the feminist cause. A lot of people who fight for any ideology don't know the first thing about the ideology that they fight for. You know, like Krusty the Clown, making that itchy and scratchy all-girls reboot. Do you think that he, of all people, understands anything about the feminist cause? I highly doubt it, but I guess anything is okay if it's appealing to the morality of Lisa fucking Simpson. Ugh, it's all about all right, Lisa, hit me with what you got. I'll give you a fair chance. You're not a girl. That's sexist. Next. You've never been called shrill just because you speak up. Let's see, you're right. I've never been called shrill for speaking up. I've been called wrong, stupid, crazy, insensitive, autistic, a moron, and several other things that would get me demonetized. But I can't say that I've ever been called shrill. Although people have said that my voice does great on them occasionally. And girls' clothing has no pockets. But it's more socially accepted for girls to wear boys' clothing or carry a purse for that matter. Is this supposed to be a joke about Lisa being a moron and only caring about petty things because it goes against the tone of the rest of the episode and the message that they're trying to convey. This is someone else's war and you, you're just a mercenary. Isn't the point of activism to get more people on your side? I am very confused. No, you can't believe the things that I believe because you are rough around the edges. Why does every discussion about feminism turn into an argument about Star Wars? Blame the Walt Disney Corporation for that one. You shouldn't be part of a protest if you don't care about the cause. Did Lisa fucking Simpson just say that? One of the most hypocritical, pseudo-enlightened characters that ever shat onto an animation cell. Did she really just say that? The character who will, at first pass, fall in line with any social movement that seems good and pure, whether or not it makes sense, or she's willing to look past even the surface of it. So apparently Milhouse's protest has gotten Krusty to react, and go back to the way things were. This gets Bart's new friends angry, because as we all know, businesses should continue to do the same thing, after it has proven to alienate their audience 
fans and cause them to hemorrhage money. This group wants to destroy the original cartoons, which gets Bart to refuse to help them, and then things start getting ugly. The thing about comedy is... Bart, stop me! Yes, Bart, stop mansplaining and manspreading and mansrupting and throwing a mantrum so you can hear our lecture on why we need to get rid of gendered language. Unless, of course, you have the man flu. Then we might take some sympathy on you. The nail polish remover gets dumped and the fumes cause the boys to cry. And this story is happy end, I guess. And Lisa decides to join them at the end. What the hell even is this? Like, what exactly is the message of this episode? <laughs> Oh, whatever you say, Bart! I mean, this message badly misunderstands Bart's character, and in turn completely damages the message they're trying to push, but okay. You see, Bart was always a rebel, yes, but he was always a rebel without a cause. True, no one called Bart shrill whenever he tried to speak up, but that's because he didn't try to speak up. Bart was always an agent of chaos. He rebelled just because. There was no higher reason or power. And of course, when you have an amoral agent of chaos argue for your message, it hurts the validity of the message. Having Bart, who hasn't changed as a character, promote this message, the two of these things play against each other, damaging each other. And honestly, this whole episode makes the message seem horrendous. The only justification that Bossy Riot has within the episode is that Skinner bans sandals. According to Lisa herself, feminism is all about the details, but this episode fails to provide any of them. And in turn, it shows a bunch of girls vandalizing shit and assaulting people for the cause of girl power. We actually never see the man try and keep them down, you know, until they've already already got a reputation of vandalizing shit. I've seen actual feminist straw men characters who have more of a point than these assholes. But beyond that, it doesn't matter which ideology you're using. If the people speaking on its behalf are like this, it makes the whole thing seem largely unappealing. Anything they're shown fighting for is brought up in passing for the sake of a joke. Like girls not having pockets, or the spelling of the word history. Things that are only relevant to BuzzFeed readers while ignoring actual women's issues. I've probably said this before, but this is the reason why I hate virtue signaling so much. Keep in mind, Virtue signaling is different than actually believing in something and putting it into your work. When you virtue signal, you either don't believe in any of this stuff, or you don't care enough, and you just do or say whatever you're supposed to to appeal to the people who actually do care. And all too often, it makes these movements look bad. And quite frankly, it comes across as insulting. Those woke nine-year-olds on Twitter that don't exist understand this shit better than you do. Sorry, Simpsons. No one on the bus is going to clap for you this time. Andy Warhol getting shot was a better look for feminism than this stupid piece of shit. Thank you.